Hello, welcome back to chapter 9. We're now going to topic 9.6, notes receivable, or NR for shorthand. Uh, this means that we're skipping topics 9.3 to 9.5, so you're not responsible for those. They are interesting topics if you are bored, trapped at home in a quarantine, and have nothing else better to do. Sure, go ahead and read those. It talks about how accounts receivable uh, is accounted for under international accounting rules, and we're focusing on U.S. GAAP. So we'll go right to notes receivable, topic 9.6. So what is a note receivable? Well, let's start with what we copied or we talked about last uh, video, account receivable. Account receivable was an, an informal agreement between two parties. Informal agreement between two parties. And basically it said that one party, right, the purchaser owed the seller, right? So purchaser owes owes the seller and promises to pay. Okay, so that was what AR is. So it differs from notes receivable. Notes receivable is a formal agreement between two parties. Formal agreement between the two parties. And so again, the purchaser promises to repay the seller. Purchaser owes the seller. But again, it's not informal. It's not just, oh, I'll pay you in 30 to 60 days. A note receivable is a formal agreement between the two parties. And I have an example of what a promissory note might look like. And again, each one's slightly different, but it should contain all these key elements. We need to know what is the principal amount that is owed. What is the due date for, pre for payment? It's a predetermined due date. Uh, the date the note was created, what is the interest rate, that's another difference between AR and NR, is that there is interest involved with a note, and it also tends to be a longer payback period. Uh, we need to know who is um, responsible for repaying and to whom. So those are the elements of a note. Uh, an important thing to note about this interest rate, that is expressed on an annual basis, so that is the annual interest rate. There is a nice summary uh, in Exhibit 9.2 on page 607 of your book that compares accounts and notes receivable. So if you want to take a look at that, it reminds us that AR is an informal agreement between the two parties. A note receivable is a more formal legal contract between the two parties. Uh, accounts receivable, it's usually within the operating cycle. We said that they try to collect within 30 to 60 days. Whereas a note receivable is a longer period of time. It can sometimes go beyond the company's operating cycle, so maybe more than a year. Accounts receivable usually does not include interest, and notes does include interest. So those are some of the key differences between an AR and an NR. Okay, um, so now let's talk about the journal entries involved. So we remember for an account receivable, it was a debit to AR and a credit to, let's say, service revenue. Now a note can be created for several different reasons. The first could be cash loan. Second could be the purchase of a good, purchase of a good, or the providing of a service as it was up here in the last example for AR. Um, the third situation could be an extension of an existing account of an existing customer account. So those are the three common uh, situations that will lead to the company creating a note receivable. So first one, they make a cash loan. Maybe this is a supplier or a good customer that the company depends on and is willing to make a cash loan, right? They're kind of investing their cash in a way because they're gonna get interest back. So what does that journal entry look like? Well, the company is giving out cash, so cash would be credited, right? and we're accepting a note receivable, which is a formal promise to repay with interest um, stipulated as well as the due date. So that's your journal entry for the first situation. The purchase of a good. So here we have a, a customer, they come, they buy a good from us, and so instead of giving accepting an AR, we accept an NR, and we sell them a good, so we do sales revenue, and of course if it's a good, 
we want to make sure that we put cost of goods sold and inventory. Maybe I shouldn't have said purchase of a good. Maybe I should have said sale of a good. I meant that the customer is purchasing it from us, but this might make it less confusing. All right, so that's your journal entry if we sell a good to a customer. The next one, we extend a customer's existing account receivable. So we're accepting a note in place of their account. So just decrease one asset and move it to another. So you'll notice that all three situations result in a debit to the note because we're creating, we're setting up that note receivable. It can just happen because of different reasons. Um, probably the most common one we'll see in this chapter will be the second one. We're making a sale, but instead of accepting a customer's account, we set up a note with them. Why do we set up that note with them? Probably because they need a longer time to repay. Maybe their credit isn't as good as a normal individual that we would extend direct credit to. So we want to protect ourselves by stipulating a due date and charging them interest. All right, so that's an overview of the difference between the two and the journal entries involved to create a note receivable. In the next video, we'll look at the additional journal entries that come with a note receivable. All right, see you then.